Hi. Most of us in our clubs use a timing light or cards to give the green, yellow, red timing indications to those who are speaking. In a Zoom-based meeting, it can be harder to know what to show for the speaker to see, especially when a different member each meeting has the timer roll and may have different supplies available. So I prepared a toolkit for the timer to use. I didn't originate this idea. I first saw it used by the Online Presenters Toastmasters Club, who have been meeting online for years and posting videos of their meetings. It makes use of Zoom's ability to show virtual backgrounds, which lets you hide what's actually behind you that the camera picks up and replace it with an image that you've chosen. Instead of a background image of the Golden Gate Bridge or a sunset, we are going to use background images of the colors green, yellow, and red. To begin, we need the color images themselves, so the toolkit has four files, one for each timer color and a white one to identify the timer itself. Here you can see what the four background colors will look like. Here's what a zoom image looks like with no background at all. I put a sheet up behind me to cover up what's behind, which is bookshelves, cabinets, lamps, bicycles. Just to the right of the stop video icon in the lower left part of the window, there's a little arrow. And if you click on that arrow, you see some options. And one of them is called choose virtual background. When you select that, it brings up your settings window with the set of virtual backgrounds you can choose from. If your computer is too old or too slow, you may get a message that says you can't use virtual backgrounds, but any modern computer will be able to handle a virtual background. There are some virtual backgrounds that come with the Zoom system, but you can use any image you want as a virtual background. What we're going to do is to load those four timer images into the set of virtual backgrounds so that we can select them during the meeting. Here's an example of selecting a virtual background from the Zoom set. This one, of course, of the Golden Gate Bridge. To add images to this set, click on the plus sign icon just to the upper right and click on Add Image. Then go to the folder where you have those four timer images, select them, and click on the Open button. You can see that all four were added to the set of virtual backgrounds. After they were added, I clicked on None to turn off the virtual background. Now, if I'm the timer, how do I use these? If I click on the white timer background, what everyone else will see is me in front of the white background that says timer. This may be okay, but even better is using the trick of covering up the camera itself, like with an index card or a piece of paper. And then all I see is the background and I don't see me. As the speaker goes through their speech, I can select the virtual background and go from green to yellow to red. That's all there is to it. Here's one thing to be aware of. When you're looking at your image in Zoom, usually you see yourself as other people see you, not as you are used to seeing yourself in a mirror. Here I am as other people see me. But in the virtual background settings, there's a box called Mirror My Video. If you check that box, you will see an image of yourself as you would see if you looked in the mirror. So when you hold your right hand or left hand up, it looks the way it would look in the mirror, which is what you're used to seeing. However, if you now put up one of these colored virtual backgrounds, you will see the words reversed in the mirror image. So it's better not to check that box for mirror my video so that the words of the colors show up properly. What does this look like in practice? Here's an image from a typical Zoom meeting. One of the members is designated as the timer. He's in the second box from the top on the right. When a speaker gets started, he switches his virtual background to the white timer card and covers up his camera so that he's not visible, just the card is. As things go along, he can put up the green background, then the yellow, then the red as needed. Here's one more consideration. This is what the screen looks like in gallery view in Zoom, which is often what people are looking at. 
But what if you're looking in speaker view? Speaker view, of course, is where the person who's speaking shows up in a large image that takes up most of the window, and the other people show up in a strip of boxes across the top. For example, here's a speaker who is giving her presentation standing up a few feet away from the camera. She may want to look at the speaker view so that she can see herself in a big image on the screen and know how she's coming across to the audience. She can't see all of the other people in the audience in their small boxes, but she does want to be able to see the timer. As she gives her speech, the timer changes the background to the appropriate color. Here's a member responding to a table topics question. Look at the images at the top of the screen. You can't see the timer box. That's because not all of the people can be seen at one time in speaker view. You have to use the little arrow at the right to scroll the list of visible speakers to the right and see the next set. When we click on that, we see the next set of images from the audience, and here's the timer. Now, as the member speaks, the timer can change the color from green to yellow to red. Why would a speaker in Zoom use speaker view? Back to our speaker who is standing away from the camera. From a distance, it may be hard for her to tell how she's coming across by looking at her little box in gallery view. So she puts herself in speaker view or pins her video that's another Zoom feature, so she can see her big image on the screen. In this picture, you can see the timer box above her big image, and she'll be able to see it too as she's speaking. She doesn't want to have to scroll left and right to be sure that the box with the timer in it is above her picture. So how can we guarantee that she doesn't have to do that? We have found that Zoom moves the box of the last person speaking up toward the front of the pack. And so if the timer speaks just before the speaker speaks, the box with the timer will be moved into the first set of boxes above the large speaker image, and no scrolling will be needed. What we've done in our speech contest is to have the timer say something like, timer ready, just before the speaker speaks, and that will cause the timer's box to appear above the main image. This may not be necessary except in special circumstances, but it's a tip to keep in mind. Thanks for watching. I hope that you'll find this toolkit useful. Feel free to pass it along to anyone taking the timer role in your club.